Imogene, you've had a meltdown. Really? Mrs. Duncan, would you be willing to assume responsibility for your daughter? Well, uh, I have to be somewhere later. Hi, I'm Christy. This is Alonzo. That's Ben. We're what the flick. Da 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 da. Um, <laughs> so we're talking about Girl Most Likely. You would think that Kristen Wiig could do no wrong, but apparently that's not true. <laughs> Ooh, lordy. Okay, so Kristen Wiig plays Imogene, who is, was a once promising playwright who uh, instead decided to become. Uh, a New York society lady and hang out with rich people even though she's from Jersey. Uh, when her rich boyfriend dumps her, she uh, attempts suicide in a way to get him back, but it looks all too effective because she writes a really good suicide note apparently, and winds up getting remanded back to the custody of her uh, compulsive gambler mother, Annette Benning, in Jersey, and she's trying desperately, Imogen wants desperately to get back to the Manhattan, but of course finds out that, you know, New Jersey is where the heart is. I don't know. Take a look. <laughs> Hi, honey. You cannot do this! I can't go with the police! This is my boyfriend. He's in the CIA. Hi, George Bush. Your name is George Bush. So uh, Annette Benning's uh, boyfriend in this is Matt Dillon, and he plays a guy, a, a we're supposed to believe, a, a former CIA agent, sort of undercover, so he has to change his name. He can't tell anybody his real name, but the name he's gone with, the, his last name is B-O-U-S-C-H-E, Bush and his name is George Bush. <laughs> but that part still makes me laugh. Was that funny <laughs> really? ever? Yeah. I'm yeah, not I sure think, that was even funny the first time. I, when it, when, because I didn't even put it together, but when Krista Wiggs like, so your name is George Bush? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, that's funny. That's I'm comedy. Not, I'm not I'm, sure that's comedy. No, no, I'm sorry. John, um, it's a little funny. <laughs> no, I think John's with you guys. This I'm alone. This is so strange and so hacky. It's very strange. No, it's, no one feels like a real person. It's one of those movies where you're looking at it and you're thinking, this looks like a comedy. This seems like it would be a comedy, but it's not funny in the slightest. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's, um, it is, uh, I think, the, the answer to the question, oh, with a cast like that, how bad can it be? So yeah. years from now, when some movie comes up with all these incredible actors in it, you think, oh, well, it must be good. Good. Remember Girl Most Likely, because you can have two great actresses, and Matt Dillon, and Darren Chris, and Bob Balaban, and Natasha Lyonne, and June Diane Raphael, and it's still nothing. This movie is nothing. Yeah, Bob Balaban came and saying this. Bob Balaban comes in at the end as the estranged father who may or may not have been dead this whole time, and he's given nothing to work with. Like, yes, you can assemble a great cast, right? Yeah. But if you give them something to work with, they yeah. can just show up. And <laughs> what really, what I find really frustrating about this is it's directed by Sherry Springer Berman and Robert Pulcini, who made one of my favorite movies of the 2000s, mm -hmm. um, American Splendor. Excellent movie. Since then, and they also did the, the HBO movie Cinema Verite, but then as far as big screen movies, they did The Nanny Diaries, which was terrible, and it was about a bright young girl in New York City. <laughs> then they made The Extra Man, which was terrible, about a bright young man in New York City. <laughs> and now they're making another fucking bright young person in New York City movie. It's like, stop it! But she's barely <laughs> even characterized, right? I mean, Kristen Wiig can do so much with just like the slightest little deadpan aside, or the, the, you know, a funny little bit of awkward physical comedy. She's what is there to her? Uh, I know, and she's playing a character not unlike her bridesmaid's character, in that she is sort of reeling from failure, you know, that which, which was funny in Bridesmaids and which was something to build on here. And, and yeah, I mean, okay, for example, she, you know, she, she's, in the, she's in the psychiatric hospital. They sedate her so that Annette Benning can take her home. She wakes up in the back of Annette Benning's Trans Am in the parking lot of a casino and then wanders through the casino in a hospital gown to find <laughs> Annette Benning. That sounds funny, right? <laughs> not in this movie. It's not not yeah, funny. We're, we're definitely in New Jersey. <laughs> Guys, in case, yes, honey. George Bush. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> Mad Woo! Calvary. The more you say it, the funnier it in gets. In case you didn't know we're in New Jersey, though, we get a Bon Jovi song and a Bruce Springsteen yeah. song. Oh, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're yeah. very obvious song choices. Yeah, like, too. I mean, yeah. they, it's glory days for Springsteen. And at bad a, medicine. Like, yeah. at a bad, right, and they're like, they're not. Like obviously, if you want to, it's a movie about the, these. The, it's set in Ocean City, New Jersey. This is on the Jersey Shore. You want to find a interesting, relevant Bruce song? You can, there's about eighty. Yeah. Um, and, they picked Glory Days. And they picked Glory Days, <laughs> but like, it wasn't a look back to their. It, I mean, it wasn't. It she was, hated Jersey. She, she hated, hated it. It was, it it was an incredibly inappropriate. Bruce, I'm always pleased to hear Bruce. It was an inappropriate Even ironically Bruce. Doesn't work. Right. It wasn't working on on any level. The yeah. one person I like in this movie, sort of, is Christopher Fitzgerald who's a Broadway guy, yes. I think this is his first film, and he plays uh, a Chris Wick's brother who is obsessed with mollusks and who has built his own shell to hide under. That's not a heavy-handed metaphor. Yeah, oh, no, no, not at all. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was a little much. But he was feel, felt sort of 
genuinely, like, it's a character that other movies could have very easily made fun of, and I think they really take well, him seriously and make him sweet. And why my score is going to be so different than that is because you guys have no heart in your dicks. That's true, um, actually. Is because, well, everything you say is, is true. The, the, not Christopher Fitzgerald's character merits more than a mention because that character and the relationship between Annette Benning and Christopher Fitzgerald and then uh, Kristen Wiig and Christopher Fitzgerald and Annette Benning the mom, Christ, uh, Kristen Wiig the sister, is why this movie had a sweetness to me that I could tolerate. That's not something you really want to put on a poster, but... <laughs> but Tolerable, says Ben Minkowitz. Tolerable sweetness. Um, but uh, there's a, you know, it, it was encapsulated by a line in the movie that totally got me when they finally, they meet their father, and it turns out Christopher Fitzgerald knew about the dad's existence long oh. before, and he said, well, why didn't you contact me for all these years? And he says, I was waiting for my sister to come home. And then sort of that unqu gets me talking about it. So there was a, no, I got it, I'm, I'm a- I I'm, wanted the movie to be about him then. That would have been much better. <laughs> to me, almost as I remember it, it sort of was about it, it turns out. But I mean, it, it, and then it sort of the framing of how we saw the mother changes sort of, so I thought there was some interesting growth to Annette Benning, who seems like somebody we just, as we were talking about after the movie, who's just a, a tacky Jersey Shore type person who we point at and laugh at. But actually she made some, some credible parenting decisions uh, that led Kristen Wiig to believe things that weren't necessarily true. So I, I don't know, I, I just, I didn't hate it. I liked them. I, I, I'm so partial to liking seeing Kristen Wiig be Kristen Wiig on screen that I, that I, I didn't hate it, which is really the best I can do. I think you're, the little touches that you refer to felt like too small and too cursory for me and not yeah. that believable. Um, I think maybe the only good part of this is Darren Chris. He's and good, yeah. he comes He's, he doesn't embarrass himself. <laughs> <laughs> he gets to sing a Backstreet Boys song. He does. Um, but he seems unbelievably sweet, perhaps, but he has a nice chemistry with Kristen Wiig, so their scenes together are nice and have some liveliness that the other parts of the he's, film do He's not. charismatic, and I want to see him in a better movie Yeah, now. I agree. Uh, but, I would, but I do want to see him in another movie, at least. You know. all right. Well, they've all been in better movies. Absolutely. All right. And will be again, I'm the sure. The Numbers so. Friends, Alonzo Duraldi. <sighs> One and a half, only for Christopher Fitzgerald. Okay, so. I give it a two and a half. You give it a... I gave it a five and a half. Thanks, I mean, I, Jake. I, I, You're really soft on these things, though. You're, you're so gooey and warm-hearted. I'm gooey and warm-hearted, but I mean, I gave it a five and a half. It's a ringing endorsement by right, comparison. Not, yeah, right, no. So our average is a 3.2. It is 18% on Rotten Tomatoes. Probably Christian Wiggs' lowest rating ever.